wives. I have a couple of them. <laughs> I'm a survivor, three. I'm a survivor. So, I remembered one of my last wives, Joan. One morning, we were in bed. Five o'clock, no Joan on the bed. I said, shit, what's going on here? It's, she was not like that. What the hell is going on? So I went to the washroom, Joan isn't there. A little while after she comes in, running, Kate, you got to do something about this. I cannot take this shit anymore. I thought, probably she saw the end coming in. It wasn't that. What do you think happened? She's a clean freak. So she got up at 5 o'clock and cleaned up the kitchen, garbage bags, and she was going out to put it in the garbage truck. As she reached on the pavement, the garbage truck was moving on. She said, driver, am I late for the garbage? He said, no, madam, jump in. <laughs> but wives are nice. <laughs> Don't take me seriously. <laughs> I love women. <laughs> Don't take me seriously. <laughs> I have three children and they are all women. So I'm a woman's man. But coming back to wives. I was teaching at the University of Winnipeg and my wife went on a consultancy trip with the United Nations. Six months. So for six months I'm alone. So I started going out with my secretary, a nice lady. Uh, no, not what you think. Nothing intimate. Just having fun, going out, dancing, I like dancing. And she's a good salsa dancer, you know. Da, ba, ba, da, da, ba. You know, so we love that. So, when she came back, a mischievous friend told her that I was having a relationship. Joan won divorce. So I went to my friend Parta. I said, Parta, I have a problem. Joan is giving me hell. She thinks I'm having an affair with Elvis. He said, Prof, you have a problem. It is not what you do, it is what she thinks you do. He said, Prof, look at me. You know, I have been married for 30 years. And for 30 years, I have been in love with the same woman. If my wife ever find out, she will kill me. <laughs> that was part of I, everything I'm telling you here is from my experience. But part of came back again. He had a daughter 13 years. Say, Mr. Keith, I am worried. So Rindra is going out with these little white boys, and you know, I am worried. I said, what are you worried about? He said, Mr. Keith, in my culture, a girl has to keep her virginity until she married. I said, Pastor, don't worry. They are kids. They are not having any intimate things. He said, Mr. Keith, you don't know. Virginity is like a balloon. One prick, it gone. <laughs> That's a bit rough. <laughs> That's a bit rough. But coming back, Jose, 
Jose has his daughter, she is misbehaving. Right? They lived in Victoria. She left home. She came to Vancouver. Five years after, she called him. Daddy, he said, Miranda, what do you want? Oh, nothing, Daddy. I just called to say hello. He said, what are you doing? You're working now? She said, yes. Now, what, what kind of work are you doing? She said, Daddy, I'm in sales. He said, where do you work from? She said, at the corner of Hastings and Main Street. <laughs> he said, so you're in sales, huh? Yeah. And that is what Jose was all about. But that was not all. Jose had an enlarged prostate. So he and his wife, they had probably intimacy probably once every two weeks. So prostate is something that wake you up three times, three, four times at night. So Jose got up to go to the washroom. And he stand up there five, six minutes, nothing would come. The prostrate blocking his pee line. So he started talking to the pro talking to the boy. He said, Look, it was your idea to come here and piss. Let's get on with it. So his wife Josephine heard him. So Jose, who are you talking there to? He said, no one you would remember there. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks Keith, that's great. I, I have a new name for Keith. He is the Bill Cosby of Vancouver. I, I said it here first, right? Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you so much.